and welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to be making a my first real video of 2024 and I've just had a very wild start to the year. If you follow me on YouTube then you know for the past year I have been working on my book and I finally finished it and we're in the editing process right now. I'll be making a whole video about everything that has happened in the book writing process for the past year so stay tuned. But for this video I'm really excited because I need to get my finances is in order. This is something I usually do first couple weeks of January, have not had any time to take a look at where my money is going, how did I do in terms of increasing my net worth, what is happening with my money and how can I improve it. And if you feel kind of the same way, you're like I actually haven't done anything for the past couple months and I really need to get my financial house in order, that is what this video is going to be all about. But first I want to say a big thank you to the Globe Mail for sponsoring this video. Now you you may not know this, but the Globe Mail has been a big factor in me investing in myself over the years. No joke, it was actually my first introduction into the world of personal finance. So back when I was in high school, I had a part-time job that I did after school at a and and I would usually get there about 15-20 minutes early because I took the bus from school and I would have some time in the break room and what was always there, like a sign of what my future had in store, was a copy of the Globe and Mail. This is how I started to learn about saving, investing, and paying off debt at a very early age and obviously has influenced me and my path to where I am today. And it's obviously something that I love to this day. I'm a huge consumer of pretty much everything Globe and Mail, including their articles, their podcasts, their free tools, and my personal favorite, Rob Carrick's newsletter, Carrick on Money. And now for a limited time, The Globe is offering unrestricted access to theglobemail.com for just $1.99 per week for the first 52 weeks plus tax. To take full advantage of this offer before goes away, make sure to go to tgam.ca slash Jessica or just click the link that I put in the description. And with that, let's talk money. Okay, so when we're talking about getting your finances together, the first thing that you're going to want to do is make a plan, a spending plan, aka a budget. Now, of course, I have my own array of uh, budget spreadsheets that you can find on my website, and I love them, have been using them for years. Obviously, I made them myself, but honestly, it doesn't matter if you use my budget spreadsheet or someone else's, just find one that makes sense in your brain. That was honestly the reason why I made my own budget spreadsheets is I couldn't find anything that I liked online by anyone else, and so I made my own. So feel free to also make your own. Nevertheless, budgeting itself is very simple. It really really comes down to three components. The first is figuring out what do you want to do with your money? And that means breaking down how much do you earn, how much do you want to save? How much do you want to spend? Now, I personally like budgeting by doing what's called the pay yourself first method. And that's really just prioritizing saving first, spending second. Without a budget and doing this pay yourself method, most people spend first and then whatever is left over, they will save. And usually there's nothing left over because we're really good at spending. Now you may be wondering, uh, I don't have any money to save. It's all going towards this crazy cost of living situation we're all in. Well, here's what you got to do. Ultimately, to free up some more cash flow so you can save some money and still pay all of your bills, you need to either reduce or cut your costs or you need to earn more money or a combination. Now, for earning more money, that could look like finding a better paying job or asking for a raise, or it could be finding some sort of side hustle on top of your main job. Now, the other two components of a budget, which I feel like don't get enough attention, but they are super important, is to track your spending every single month and track your net worth. So a budget is what you'd like to happen with your money, but you need to keep yourself accountable. And the only way to do that is to find out where your money is actually going. Are you spending in line with your budget? And when you track your expenses, you can really find out, oh, oh, all my money is going into this category, but that is not in my budget. I need to change my habits. I need to switch up how I'm spending my money. I need to do some, some work to figure this out. Now, I know it doesn't sound exciting or fun, but I've been tracking my spending for seven plus years. And yeah, I don't necessarily love doing it every single month, but it has been the thing that has kept me on track and made me more accountable. And again, it really is one of those things where it takes you maybe an 
hour a month to do and then you're done, but you know exactly where your money's going and you feel more in control of your finances. Now, the other thing you're gonna wanna track and you could do this monthly or you could do it, you know, quarterly, annually, whatever, I like doing it monthly, is tracking your net worth. And that's really just taking a look at what's the value of all my assets, uh, what are the balances on my liabilities, how much do I have, how much do I owe, and are we growing every month? So ultimately you want to have more assets and less debt every single month. And you can do that by saving and investing and paying off your debts. Now, the reason tracking your net worth is so important is for that motivation that we all need to keep going. Sometimes it can feel like a slog, you know, tracking your expenses, looking at your budget, paying your bills. Sometimes it's just not fun. But when you see your net worth going up every single month, even if it's just a tiny bit, it is evidence that what you're doing is worth it. It is working. Keep going. Now, the second thing that you're going to want to do is really take a look at your spending, but not just from the last month, for the entire year that just happened. And cut, cut, cut. Now, this is easily done when you use a budget spreadsheet like the ones that I have and start doing it on a regular basis. Now, for me, because I've been using these spreadsheets for over seven years now, I have seven years of data of where my money has gone, which has been really helpful, not just to see what are some of my spending patterns and habits and how can I fix them, but also it will let me know if you're paying for something that you forgot. Too often I think we sign up for an annual subscription or a free trial and forget to cancel it. No joke, I was literally talking to my husband. He was looking at his expenses and a expense popped up that he thought he canceled and he never did. And it was a substantial amount of money. It's these little things that over time that really eat into your cash flow that you really want to pay attention to. Now, the third thing you're going to want to do is to make sure that you are protecting yourself and your wealth. And what I mean by that is making sure that you are properly insured. I think too often we, you know, start a new job and say, hey, we've got benefits and insurance. And you're like, this is great. I'm covered. And then we never take a second to really look at how much am I covered? Is this enough? And guess what? Once you leave that employer, you're no longer covered. The first thing I would suggest is taking a look at your benefits booklet, find out, you know, do you have critical illness? Do you have life insurance? Do you have disability insurance? What kind of insurance does your employer provide? And then find out, is that actually enough? Or do I need to supplement it with a private insurance plan? There's actually a really great tool on the Globe Mail website to help you determine what your life insurance needs are. So I will link to that below, but I found it super helpful. Now, along the same lines, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have your estate plan all up to date. And if you don't have an estate plan, this is your call to action to make one. For example, let's say you made a will for yourself several years ago, and recently you got married, you may wanna update your will because maybe you wanna put your spouse in there. Now, how you can go about doing this, and I did make a video about this, so you can check that out later. You can go the traditional route, which is to hire a Wilson Estates lawyer, or you can do the DIY route. There are lots of online platforms now that allow you to do it yourself for a very minimal cost. Now, the last thing I suggest is to make sure you've got your investments right. Now, I know investing is a very big topic, and I've got a bunch of videos on this channel that you can check out after this, but here is what I would suggest you do. Number one, find out what kind of fees you're paying. Most people have no idea how much they're paying in fees and you are paying fees. For example, if you're investing in mutual funds or segregated funds, they are notorious for having high MERs, which stands for management expense ratios. Well, let's say they have a 2% MER. If you have $100,000 invested, that means that that management company is taking 2% off $100,000. That's $2,000. And that is regardless of how well or poor your portfolio performs. If you have a negative year and your portfolio goes down, they're still taking their 2%. This is why I always suggest people take a look at their fees and see, is there an alternative that has much lower fees? For me personally, I enjoy investing in exchange traded funds, ETFs, because they have substantially lower fees, like as low as 0.05%. Next, I'd highly recommend you review your portfolio's asset allocation. Is it still appropriate for you, your timeline, your risk tolerance, and your goals? What I see too often is people who are just getting started investing choose a very conservative portfolio because they just don't know what they're going to do with that money yet. Maybe they will want to liquidate it for a down payment on a home. They just don't know. But then they never look at the asset allocation of their portfolio again, and then it's stuck in something conservative, earning very minimal returns when it could be adjusted to their new goal, which is retirement in three decades. And they could be earning a higher return because they have a higher ratio of equities versus fixed income. This is all to say that if you have no idea what your asset allocation for your portfolios are, that is a great place to start to see does this make sense and do I need to change it? And lastly, because investing can feel very intimidating, I know the jargon, the language, and 
Reddit, just Reddit in general, I highly recommend that you invest in yourself by educating yourself. No one is born naturally good at investing. It is a skill that is learned. Now, honestly, there has never been a better time to educate yourself about investing than right now because there are so many resources to help you than there ever have been. Now, obviously you can take a look at my investing course called Wealth Building Blueprint for Canadians. It's specifically about passive investing for Canadians goes through a ton and you can find more information on my website. But what I always like to suggest is some of my favorite books. First, we've got Beat the Bank by Larry Bates, Millionaire Teacher by Andrew Hallam, and of course, Money Like You Mean It by none other than the Globe's Erica Alini. I also have a much more substantial list of books I highly recommend checking out on my website. Again, I will link to it below. But like I mentioned before, one of my still go-to resources to find out what's going on in the investing world or what's going on in personal finance or what are some really cool tools to use is the Globe and Mail. Not only can you find pretty much any article on any money topic by expert journalists, but they also have a number of really great free tools for you to use. For example, they've got their TFSA growth calculator, their target wealth calculator, their portfolio longevity calculator, as well as their watch list and their build an ETF portfolio tools. And as another reminder, for a limited time, the Globe is offering unrestricted access to theglobemail.com for just $1.99 per week for your first 52 weeks plus tax. So to sign up, just visit tgam.ca slash Jessica or check out the link in my description. So with that, thank you so much for watching and I hope you take some of these steps to get your finances back on track with me and I will be back with a new video very soon.